Today I have something new on the table, Honey Badger Knives, three different sizes of basically the same knife. Now I purchased these myself and I'm pretty excited to show them to you because I think they could be a really good option for those looking for a knife you can uh, use and abuse without any hesitation. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's introduce Honey Badger in general because we haven't really talked about them on the channel. This company is coming out of South Africa. It has most of its knives made in China to very, very high specifications. And the purpose was to create a knife that could be easily accessed for much of the world where Spyderco and a lot of the U.S. brands are exorbitantly expensive, right? And they were able to achieve that. And even in the U.S., these are $20 to $30 cheaper than similar Spydercos that are also made in China of the exact same materials. So I think they were able to achieve what they were looking for and in some ways exceed my expectations in comparison to those knives. And one of the things I noticed immediately when I picked them up was the stock of these blades. These are stout, very, very stout blades designed for real use. And because they have a full flat grind and they're pretty tall, you still get a nice thin edge, but you also get a very strong tip, a really nice spine that actually has a decent, not a full 90 degree, but close, and uh, just many ways to deploy it on top of everything else. So you have the flipper tab, you have a reverse flick, you have the thumb flick, and yeah, I've been using this knife a little bit and honestly I really really enjoy it now uh, this is gonna have FRN handles and frankly these look like they should be grippier than they actually are they're a bit smoother than uh, you might expect and um, in addition to that you have a really nicely designed deep carry pocket clip this is an ultra deep carry clip that tucks in underneath the scale like you can see here there's actually a spacer on the other side to hold the um, other one in place and uh, that is a really cool thing because it's completely flush and there are brands quite a bit more expensive that don't have that feature. So really well done. In the box, you're also going to get something to adjust the tool, which I really like. So it comes with a little hex wrench if you don't have one. So there's that along with some paraphernalia showing all of the uh, other models. Now, these knives run all under $40. All three of these are approximately the same price, give or take. I think this one's a little bit cheaper uh, than this, but they're all under 40 bucks on Amazon. That's an interesting price point. $40 is right on that edge where I can definitely see justifying these knives over others of similar price because of the quality control that I'm experiencing, the um, just the fact that this company really is designing a knife for use right and when you look at how everything else is increasing in price it makes more sense but more than that i think where this was designed to compete is in markets that were outside of the us right not necessarily where we are so even though hcr 13 mov is not what i'm really looking for i really would like to see something like 14c in a approximately this price maybe even uh at least a 9cr or maybe a 10cr um I still think it's very much competitive. And if these ever made it to a big box store in the US, whether it's Cabela's, Home Depot, doesn't matter where it is, they would just, they would sell out so fast because the big, the stores that are selling these, like the CRKTs, the Kershaws, they can't compete with this in price point, right? At $40, they're selling like much worse executed knives than this. So I think that they're doing a pretty good job. My struggle with these knives in general is when they came out, they were much more competitive than they are now relative to the materials that you will find from many of the Chinese knife brands. That probably doesn't matter too much because of um, pretty much the reputation of Honey Badger. And, and it, it makes sense too. I, I really like this this group of people. And when I talked to them at Blade Show, I could tell that they were trying their best to actually update and continue to evolve as a company. So really, really nice design on these. And they make a bunch of different shapes and models. And here's the cool thing. They're going to be releasing an entire series of knives in 14C28 as well, the Sandvik Swedish Steel, which for me, at least with a hard use knife, feels like the perfect budget steel. Easy to sharpen, good corrosion resistance, much, much higher toughness than the HCR. Uh, probably the perfect steel for them. 
Now those knives are going to run anywhere between $65 and $75, which does feel a little steep, I will admit, for 14C. But when if they're able to get into big box stores across the world, whether it's in New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, and so on, I think that they're going to do incredibly well because the execution is really good. All right. The only thing, the only thing I found with these, and funny enough, after playing with them enough, it, it basically went away, is that I had a little bit of lock bar stick in, not this one. This one actually came out and no issues whatsoever, but in the other two, I did get a little lock bar stick. So if I really like throw it out there, I'm going to use a, a little spidey drop. I think that did it last time. Let's see if I can do it one more time. Hold on a second. No. No, I can't quite get it. You see, I can't even get it to, to do it. So it's, it must not be that much of an issue. But there was a little bit of lock stick and um, not the end of the world. It's actually something that's very easy to fix, by the way. If I took it apart, I could just ground those edges with a bit of sandpaper, just a smidgen, and it would just, it would have no problem. But uh, that is something of note. The other thing is it's weird, and I this is something that I think is a flaw that they should work on in the future. You see how the jimping here and the angle that they've added is only a small portion of the total curve. This area up here is actually really, really sharp. I mean, you can see it's it's very, very sharp. So I actually touched this edge quite a bit more than I think they realized. So I think in the future they should continue this jimping all the way up to the top. And also that chamfering, which you can see with that reflection, should continue continue all the way to the top of the edge. There's no problem back here. My hand is always pushing in the forward end, no matter what. So that's not a problem, but you should definitely extend it. That's And that's sort of a minor thing. And just in case it's useful to Honey Badger, I recommend they do that. I think one thing that really attracts me to this design is the way they have created this forward finger choil with all that jimping. It really locks your hand in place. So if you are doing fine work with the tip, you really don't feel like you're going to slip up on that knife blade. And I really, really like that. I also feel like more so than a lot of the other inexpensive knives, this feels a little bit more heavy duty. I, I don't know if that's just me. I'm not saying I would baton with it or anything like that, but it's just executed with the idea that the blade should be really durable. And I think they've done exactly that. Let me just give you an example of the difference between the thickness of the blade here and the original Ontario Rat Model 1. Hold on one second. Now this is the original Ontario Rat Model 1, right? In the OS 8. And this is the larger variety, okay? Now look at the thickness of the blade on this one compared to this one. Pretty substantial difference, wouldn't you say? And because it's a drop point, you actually get a little bit more thickness out at the tip as well. Let me see if I can show that. You really get to see just how big of a difference it actually is. So I, I really got to say, I like this quite a bit. Um, in some ways, I like it far better than the Rat Model 1. And being a tall flat grind like this with a stout blade, it doesn't really give up any of the slicing capability because it has more time to taper down to the edge. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. I would love to see the, the 14C28 blades. My only thing is I'm hoping that they will be able to hit the market at a price point that is very competitive. When I look at them on Blade HQ, they still seem a little bit high for me to be competitive on the online scene in America, but Here's the thing, it's hard to determine whether it's a competitive knife in other places where they might be able to get better exchanges and relative to the other knife brands, they're gonna be a lot cheaper. So the quality is there, the execution is there, the, the concept of what they're trying to achieve is there. It really just depends on what you're looking for. And I think as far as what I can tell, this is a pretty good option for someone who really is going to use their knife. Not, not just carry it around, not take Instagram pictures with it, but actually going to use their knife. So really nicely done by Honey Badger Knives. I'm looking forward to seeing some more. And yeah, this one has a stronger detent for sure compared to the other two. You can always adjust these kinds of things yourself. 
But uh, so far, I've been pretty pleased with it. The lock stick issue that I had has seemed to have gone away just by using them a little bit. But yeah, looking forward to trying more. And if you want a smaller knife, this sub three inch one actually has a surprising amount of handle real estate when you use that choke up position. So definitely another good option under three inches. All right, that's it for today. Thank you again for your time and we'll talk again soon.